Okay, so in this video, we're going to calculate the Taylor polynomial for five terms at pi over 2 for the function sine of x. Now, when calculating the Taylor series, it's always good to know what function you're going to use. So in here, it's sine. The point, which is pi over 2, so point A, so A would be pi over 2. And the number of terms, so degree n, would be five terms, so n is 5. Then here, I've got the general formula for calculating Taylor polynomials. And so basically what you would do is substitute the n's for 5 and the a's for pi over 2. Because a is the point and n is the number of terms. So very simply here, this would become t5 of x equals f of a. So that's f of pi over 2. Because a is pi over 2. Then now here we've got the derivatives, second derivatives, third derivatives, fourth derivatives, fifth derivatives. So the first derivative is divided by 1 factorial and x minus pi over 2 in our case because a is pi over 2 to the power of 1. Second derivative again pi over 2. 2 factorial x minus pi over 2 squared. And there's a pattern forming here. So you've got a 2, 2 and 2, 3, 3 and 3, 4, 4 and 4, 5, 5 and 5. So you know you're on the right lines when you're following that pattern. So you say for example here you'd have the fourth derivative of pi over 2 divided by 4 factorial and x minus pi over 2 to the power over 4. So next stage we need to do is find all the derivatives. So we're going to differentiate sine 5 times. So our value, our function, sorry, is sine. So sine of pi over 2 is 1. So sine of pi over 2 is 1. So that's good. So we couldn't have sine of 90 degrees. Then we take the derivative of sine, which is cosine, and then find the value of cosine at pi over 2. So cosine of pi over 2 or cosine of 90 is 0. And then we take the third, fourth and fifth derivatives as well. So for the second derivative, we take the derivative of cosine, which is minus sine. And then minus sine at pi over 2 is minus 1. Now this is straightforward because we've already worked out that sine is 1. So minus sine is minus 1. And then they take the derivative of minus sine, which is minus cosine. And again, we've already done this derivative because you could use minus 1 as a constant multiple. So sine is cosine. So minus sine is minus cosine. Well, cosine at pi over 2 is 0, so minus cosine at pi over 2 is also 0. Fourth derivative, take the derivative of minus cosine, which is sine. So the value of sine at pi over 2 is 1. So the fourth derivative at pi over 2 is 1. Fifth derivative is cosine. Cosine at pi over 2 is 0, because we know that co uh, cosine of 90 is also 0. Cosine of pi over 2 is same. So there's a pattern form in here, sine, cosine, minus sine, minus cosine. Sine, cosine, and if it went on, it would be minus sine and minus cosine for 6 and 7. So that pattern would keep going on and on forever. And so it would also be the values of the derivatives. So the function is 1, so the derivative is 0, minus 1, 0, 1, 0, and then it would be minus 1 and then 0, and then 1, 0, and so on. And that would keep going on. Okay, so now we can start working out our Taylor polynomial formula. Start plugging in the values for a. So we've got f of pi over 2 plus the first derivative of pi over 2 divided by 1 factorial x minus pi over 2. x second derivative, so this would be the minus 1, 2 factorial x minus pi over 2 squared, and so on and so on and so on. You just do it in slow stages so we can just not make any mistakes so you can see where you're going to. So this is now, we can now start plugging in the values for all these derivatives now and then see where that takes us. So the value at f of pi over 2 is 1. So we've worked that out here. f of pi over 2 is 1. So that's straightforward. The first derivative of pi over 2 is 0. So Let's have a look. First derivative of 0. So if you had 0 divided by 1 factorial times x minus pi over 2, that is 0. Hence, there's no value in here. Then the second derivative. Second derivative is minus 1. 
So minus 1 over 2 factorial, x minus pi over 2 squared. So that's basically minus a half. So this plus sign can flip to a negative. Then 1 over 2 times x minus pi over 2 squared. So a half x minus pi over 2 squared. Third derivative is the same as the first derivative. It is also 0, which is here. So this value will disappear because there's no third, no third uh, uh, x minus pi over 2 cubed in there. The fourth derivative is 1, so that's 1. 1 over 4 factorial, well 4 factorial is 1 times 2 times 3 times 4, which is 24. So that leaves us with 1 over 24 times x minus pi over 2 to the power of 4. And that's that in there. And then the fifth one would also disappear, just like the first and the third, because that is also 0. So 0 over 5 factorial, 5 factorial is 120, but it doesn't matter because we're multiplying it by 0. And that's our Taylor polynomial for sine at pi over 2 to 5 degrees. Now we can check that in the graph and see how close we are. So I've done a graph for it here. Now we were asked to calculate it at pi over 2. So pi over 2 is going to be somewhere around here. It's at the peak. Now the dotted line is the real graph of sine. And this thick black line here is our Taylor polynomial. So at pi over 2, you can see it's very accurate all the way back to 0. And once it starts going into negative, then it starts to tear away. And the same here. Once it starts to go in towards pi, which is just around here somewhere, then again it starts to pull away. So you can say that we are pretty accurate with our Taylor polynomial. So we can say that's a success. So we can conclude that the Taylor polynomial of degree 5 at pi over 2 for sine is 1 minus a half x minus pi over 2 squared plus 1 over 24, x minus pi over 2 to the power of 4. Okay, and that concludes the video. Thanks for watching. Any comments below, and uh, please remember to subscribe. Thanks very much.